Hey there, welcome to the AI Equation Podcast. In today's episode, we're diving into how AI is revolutionizing customer support. We're gonna explore some AI tools that are transforming the way businesses interact with their customers. Hey, welcome to the podcast, Jake. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, I, I, f- I feel like you, now that I'm introducing the podcast, where you've been you've been leading the podcast for many months now, and you've been sharing the, the, the top news stories every day, and we've switched up the format a little bit. I wonder if you feel like, hey, man, now I, I feel like I'm a guest on the podcast. No, I, I you know, still feel uh, a big part of the show, and I, but I'm glad to have you here as well. So we can kind of... Uh... It's a little easier when there's two people talking. Let's just say that. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so that's good. Yeah, I, I, I just don't want to overstep and and take over the show here, you know. So it's got to be. Uh, uh, if if I do, I'll probably just start sending in my AI chatbot, which <laughs> sounds a lot like me, but is not me. All right. Well, let go ahead and lead us with the first story then. Yeah. So today uh, we're going to be covering AI's role in customer support. Uh, that begins by examining the pivotal role that AI can play in customer support. And the way businesses assist and engage with their customers is evolving rapidly thanks to the AI. AI AI-driven customer support solutions are available around the clock, ensuring a more efficient and responsive customer service experience uh, pretty much across any industry that you can visit their website. Yeah, I really love this topic, Jake, and and I do so because I think, you know, my experience in marketing, sales, and customer support, all three of those for most companies should always align. So whether you're a consumer or a business, you're listening to the podcast here and you're thinking, look, well, how is AI going to benefit me? I, I think these are three of the top cases for business. Of course, we could talk finance and other areas, but those are more sensitive when it comes to the communication, engagement between you know, brand and consumer, it's marketing, sales, and customer support. So there was a story that I shared some time ago about Disney uh, creating a task force to explore AI to cut costs. And that that's really not what it was about. I mean, when you looked at the story, Disney had uh, 11, I, I believe at the time of this story, 11 job openings seeking candidates with um, artificial intelligence or machine learning experience. So if you're Disney, yes, you have many different brands, but if if you just set aside their virtual properties like Disney Plus and 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 the studios and whatnot, and if we just focus on Disney World as a a brick and mortar business, a giant one at that. But if you've ever been to a theme park like Disney, then you know what customer support, you know, feels like. And they've never been able to really capture that on the phones. And I've personally experienced that where you you buy a ticket online on a Disney website to go to the park, and then you need to make changes. Well, for a long time, it felt a little bit like, you know, frustrating at times when you had to download the app, then get on the phone with someone. And now with these chat bots uh, becoming, well, they're, they're increasingly sophisticated they they allow these systems to provide instant responses to their customer inquiries and and of course you know companies like zendesk um intercom and many others are enabling their customers to use their vir- virtual agents as well and those virtual agents they can handle a range of customer service tasks from answering questions to processing orders um so if you think of the you know, from marketing to sales to customer service. In the last episode, we talked about sales and how during the sales process, you know, salespeople may be using certain AIs to give you a better experience. Well, as you go down that path, again, those chatbots are there to make your experience better. And so is that going to make uh, customer support obsolete? I don't think so. I think it's just going to allow customer service reps at different call centers like at Disney. It's going to allow them to handle more calls. And at the end, that's going to make you, the customer, a happier uh, customer. So I, I love it for chatbots. Now, how about for analytics? Tools like IBM Watson and Salesforce's Einstein can also help businesses better understand their customers. What it does is is analyzes customer data and then it predicts their needs, their behaviors, their preferences, their issues, 
It's looking at their affinity groups, their interests, obviously their, their buying habits, and it's going to allow companies to proactively address your concerns. So I love analytics for that reason. But, um, you know, one of the things that we talk about here often is, you know, being careful who you share your data with. So make sure that whatever software or web app that you're using, make sure you know who the team is behind the app, where they're storing. Are they using AWS? Are they using Google Cloud? What technology are they using and how are they managing your data? To me, that's like very important. I want to give any startup the opportunity to grow. I mean, and clearly our sponsor here, Article Factory, is a startup and it, it's doing AI. And of course, we want to see growth. However, it's important that for you, the consumer, the AI enthusiast, the business owner, it's important that you understand who is behind these companies. You can't just go with anyone. You need to understand the team behind it. All right. And then uh, the, the last customer support uh, tool that I want to share with you here is just speech recognition. That technology has entered a customer support landscape as well. Companies like CallMiner, they use AI to analyze customer service calls. CallRail is another one actually that we've used as well. It will analyze the different keywords that you that that um, uh, the agent and the customer spoke about, and then it will give you data analytics based on that, providing the insights into the performance and the customer sentiment as well. So you hear this with some whisper agents at the end, maybe coming in and saying, how would you rate this call? So overall, look, it, it helps companies improve their customer quality. So whether it's Disney or a local business, you always want to improve your customer experience. And that customer experience, no doubt, is is dictated by your support and your service. And if your if your human uh, customer support agents can use some of these AI tools to better that experience, then you should absolutely. So, do you have any idea of like what specific fields might be impacted the most for customer support and AI? I know like chatbots. I think of like uh, car dealerships, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think e-commerce is clearly the biggest one right now. Why? Because anyone who buys on Amazon or Etsy or a Shopify website, you you are you are already into that world where you part with your money easily and you buy the product or service, it gets shipped to you. So those types of consumers, Jake, no doubt are going to be a better use case than are some industries that are still a little behind the times, right? So, and I do think what, what you just mentioned, Jake, is important to know too. I think if you're making a big transaction, like buying a car, like buying a house, um, the the interaction with the chatbot is going to be a little bit more complicated than if you're just asking the chatbot, hey, I, I applied this coupon, but the discount didn't you know, didn't apply. And now you charge me full price. Hey, Mr. Chatbot, I need my refund, right? Yeah, I, to I totally get that. So along with customer support today, uh, we're also going to highlight the work of Yi Song, a professor at the Chinese Academy of Sciences from Times 100 Most Influential People in AI. As a sophomore in Beijing, Professor Yi Song embarked on a remarkable path towards building AI systems that mimic the human brain, and more importantly, possess a sense of morality. Inspired by Steven Spielberg's AI artificial intelligence, Yi aspired to create robots capable of loving humanity. Over time, Yi's focus shifted towards addressing the potential risks associated with AI systems. He dedicated his expertise to working alongside policymakers to establish regulations promoting beneficial AI development. In 2019, Yi led the team that crafted the Beijing AI principles, make, marking a significant step towards responsible AI. Professor Song firmly believes in fostering international collaboration. He strives to convey the commonality between Chinese and global perspectives on AI, on AI's challenges and risks. His involvement in diplomacy initiatives in addressing the UN Security Council illustrates his commitment to promoting shared values and objectives. While geopolitical tensions and AI's controversial use for surveillance have strained relations between China and the US, Professor Yi Song is resolute in the shared concern for AI's impact. A recent poll revealed a striking 62% of US voters are concerned about AI, 
paralleled by 91% of Chinese respondents supporting mandatory safety and ethics frameworks for AI models. As the custodian of AI ethics and international cooperation, Yi Song emphasizes the imperative need for collaboration. With both nations sharing apprehensions and aspirations concerning AI, collaboration becomes an inevitable path forward. Yeah, so I think anything that is, you know, uh, China related, uh, unfortunately, is, is something that I feel like it's going to be hard. I'm I'm definitely a globalist. I believe that uh, you know the 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 best ideas should win the contest. But unfortunately, uh, the global politics right now between the U.S. and China and uh, obviously other nations is 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 a little tense. So um, you know, even like if you look at the Nvidia uh, chips, which we've talked about here on the podcast, not only in the news but uh, also in in our blog posts, um, Nvidia you know, really holds the key. And I think that the U S uh, is going to do everything they can to, they're going to do everything they, they can do to keep China from um, g- gaining any traction in the world of AI. I mean, if you look at what Alibaba is doing, it's, it's cutting edge, but it's nowhere near what open AI, Microsoft and others are doing here in the U S. So um, I, I think it's great if uh, they have these uh, you know, mandatory safety and ethics frameworks for AI models. So it, it's ultimately, you know, it has to be a private public partnership, which is complicated as it is for each country. So, you know, now if we involve China and the US, uh, we'll see how things work out. But I, I, I'm i glad that, uh, you know, we're able to uh, highlight people like Yi Zhang, uh, that, that, is, that, that that is working towards making AI safer for everyone right because i think on the other side i keep hearing so many with doomsday stories and i think that that is making people not adopt or adapt to this new uh, world that includes ai so whether you're a consumer or a business you can't sit on the sidelines and that's what we're trying to do here on the podcast jake right we, we tell people all the time we're trying to bring you the news stories. We're trying to let you know what the like the thought leaders, the companies, like everything that is AI related, so that you can you can go into it understanding what the upside is for you. Yeah, and so people can also on the, on the same hand go in and use AI safely, um, no matter what they're using it for. Right. You know, I I, I was thinking as we're speaking here. On the podcast, I'd love to ask Chat GPT in real time here, so that this way we can keep things honest. Let's ask Chat Chat GPT. Hey, Chat GPT, is it safe for me to use AI? Let's see what the response is. I've never asked Chat GPT this. <laughs> All right, so let's see what it says. Hey, Mister Alex, absolutely. AI can be pretty safe if used responsibly. Hey, that's true. Said, And then it says, just keep in mind that things like data privacy, hey, we keep talking about that, especially since you're in the digital marketing and technology space, deal with customer information. Always use reputable platforms or services, kind of like how, we, how you prioritize using your data and reliable sources for your content. Are you kidding me? This is exactly what we've been saying episode no seriously right now i didn't use chat gpt to to um give that recommendation because it's common sense it's just really common sense you know like i i've talked about this this um with you before jake uh, with my kids where before they download an app before they uh watch a certain movie and a streaming service before they buy a certain video game right we as a family do a deep dive into who created it, what company, who's behind it, what's their motive. And sometimes we've arrived, it could be something as simple as an app on the app store. We've arrived at the fact that this app is only there to collect data. It's not really about the game. And so with AI, it's a lot the same. It, that's the same approach that I take with my kids. I believe that business owners and everyday consumers who want to use AI, it, it's that. Be careful with your privacy. Use reputable platforms. And then I think at the end of the day, 
um, you're you're going to be a lot safer, but not miss out on this amazing technology. What do you think? Definitely. I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, for people that have been using technology for a long time, it's it's just basic safety of using new softwares. You just have to carry it on to AI now. Of you, of, you know, knowing who the publisher is, knowing who the developers are, um, knowing what data they collect. Absolutely. Well, there you go, guys. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of the AI Equation podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving us a review. Of course, sharing the show, clicking subscribe so that you can get the, uh, you know, the notification. And, you know, we're on Apple, we're on Spotify, Amazon, and many other platforms. 